the uh, opposition to the ordinance was led by an organization called Save Our Children. Uh, most famously, the spokeswoman for that organization was Anita Bryan. I used to have another show on Facebook, now on YouTube, and it used to be called Gustavo's Life. And I looked very different. Uh, I was skinnier. <laughs> and, my, <laughs> and my hair was short and brown. So it's still me. So I have a big interview with Henrietta, which I'm gonna actually edit. And we're gonna show it in another separate video, which I think is gonna comprise of many episodes because her life was very interesting. So please, Howard, tell us more about Henrietta. The video is about to start. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. There we go! So uh, Henrietta Robinson uh, moved to, uh, to Miami Beach in 1959 and she was one of the first out uh, transgender woman, women uh, in South Florida. Uh, through the years and even through uh, multiple decades, uh, she became uh, a noted uh, figure, a beloved figure yes. uh, in Miami Beach. Uh, she could often be found at one of the many uh, gay bars that were here uh, at the time, including the Twist, which was her favorite hangout. And uh, she had a, a seat uh, there assigned just to her. Oh. Uh, her nickname uh, was the Mother of Miami Beach. Yes, and she was. And you know, I have to say the courage of this woman because, I mean, she, in the 1959, she went full drag. I mean, 24 seven. It wasn't just for a show, like some people. This, that was her life. She was living as a woman. 1969 happened, the Stonewall and all that jazz, right? And then the gay rights started being acknowledged and all that stuff. So what happened after Stonewall here in Miami Beach? Uh, good question. So that's when uh, things started to get more uh, liberal attitudes uh, towards uh, gays and lesbians in society in general, including uh, here in South Florida. Uh, both the 1972 Democratic and Republican National Conventions were in Miami Beach and uh, gay people uh, held protests uh, at both conventions. And very interestingly, in 1972 at the Democratic Convention, a woman named Madeline Davis, uh, she was a George McGovern delegate from New York, uh, she made a speech in front of the convention. It was the first speech by a lesbian at a national convention to advocate uh, for gay rights. And she called it a uh, basic right. Uh, she later went on to teach the first university course uh, in America about lesbianism. Uh, 1972 was also the year of the first uh, gay pride parade uh, here in Miami Beach. No way! Uh, yes, it was one of the first ones in the entire country. Uh, however, at the time it wasn't officially sanctioned by the city. Uh, it was just held uh, privately without uh, official approval. And uh, very noteworthy, in the late 1970s, uh, the Miami area became uh, the attention of the gay rights movement uh, all across the country. In 1977, there was a vote in uh, what was then Dade County, today it's Miami-Dade County, uh, on uh, whether uh, there should be an ordinance enacted uh, protecting gays and lesbians from discrimination. Oh, okay. And uh, it was passed by the uh, county government. However, there was a big backlash to that ordinance and eventually it was put up uh, to a vote by the citizens of the county. The uh, opposition to the ordinance was led by an organization called Save Our Children. Uh, most famously, the spokeswoman for that organization was Anita Bryan. Uh, she called the uh, ordinance an abomination. She was successful at first, the uh, ordinance was put up uh, to a vote by the county citizens. Uh, it was repealed by a ratio of two to one. So the meaning, vote, well, like the, we it, all approved it. No, disapproved it. Oh, it was so, repealed. So, so gays and lesbians. Won? She won. Gays and lesbians no longer had protection. It was uh, passed again 
by the county government, but not for 20 years later, not till 1998. So, but it, it did, as you just alluded, it uh, sort of ruined Anita Bryant's career. So there was a, a boycott organized by gay and lesbian people of Florida citrus products. Uh, not everybody abided by the boycott, but it was uh, successful enough to ruin the career of Anita Bryant. She had to resign from the Florida Citrus uh, Commission. She was no longer their spokesperson. Right. And uh, she wasn't nearly as popular uh, after that. She didn't appear on TV uh, as much uh, after that as before. After that, the uh, gay life uh, in the area rarely flourished, actually, uh, especially, uh, again, nationwide in the Miami area, uh, society became much more liberal towards gays and lesbians uh, into the 1980s and 90s. Unfortunately, that was also the period uh, of the AIDS crisis. Ooh. And, uh, of course, many, many people uh, suffered and died of AIDS in that era. So Miami Beach uh, became a magnet for people with AIDS. Uh, at the time, there was no uh, effective drugs uh, right. once people got uh, HIV or AIDS. They were uh, being poisoned by the cocktail inhibitors at that point until they got better. Yeah, at the beginning of that, there yeah. was nothing at all. Usually, if you were uh, once you got AIDS, most people only lived for a year or two. Many people from the north, especially New York City, uh, came down to South Florida to Miami Beach for a couple of reasons. One, uh, the attitude towards people uh, with AIDS here uh, was pretty good. There was a lot of discrimination uh, against people with AIDS, uh, especially in the uh, early years of that era. Also, uh, of course, there's the beautiful weather all year. So the thinking was uh, among some people, if you're only going to be alive for a year or two, uh, you could spend it where you could spend uh, it in, right. uh, in a nice weather location. In the uh, beginning, uh, in the very late 1970s and early uh, 80s, saw a flourishing of gay life in Miami and Miami Beach. That was the uh, when the uh, economic revitalization of Miami Beach started. Uh, historically, gay people have been uh, very heavily involved in economic revitalization of s inner cities, uh, including uh, here in Miami Beach. Uh, there were uh, one reason for that is uh, gay people, uh, especially at the time, didn't have families. They didn't have to worry as much as crime as a. Uh, other people with families might have to. Also, uh, if there was a poor education system, uh, the overwhelming majority of gay people back then uh, didn't have children, so they didn't have to worry about uh, how good or bad the schools were. Uh, gay people were very heavily involved in the preservation movement in Miami Beach, which began in the mid-1970s. Uh, gay people were also involved in the, with the founding in 1981 of the Miami Beach Community Development Corporation, uh, which, uh, whose goal was uh, the economic revitalization of South Beach. Eventually, that organization got into the renovation of uh, housing for lower-income people, including uh, providing housing for people with AIDS. What would be the most modern political developments here in Miami Beach, our paradise? So uh, in 1992, uh, the city of Miami Beach enacted an ordinance protecting gays and lesbians uh, from discrimination. Nice. In, in uh, 2010, that was widened uh, to cover transgender people as well. In uh, 2004, uh, domestic partners could register in Miami Beach. Uh, in 2008, uh, domestic partners could register in the city of Miami. In 2008, uh, gay marriage was put to a vote uh, to the state of Florida voters, and uh, the voters enacted a ban to gay marriage in 2014. Uh, it got 62% of the vote. 60% uh, was needed uh, to amend the Constitution banning gay marriage, uh, so it just squeaked by. Oh, wow. So they did it? They banned it at, yeah. at that point in, two, okay. in 2008. In January 2014, six same-sex couples filed a lawsuit in Miami-Dade County challenging the ban on gay marriage. 
In January 2015, uh, Miami-Dade Circuit judge named Sarah Zabel declared that the state's gay marriage ban was unconstitutional. Hours later, uh, Catherine Pareto and Carla Arguello became the first same-sex couple uh, to wed in Florida uh, 15 years after they began wearing wedding rings. And this was six months before same-sex marriage became legal nationwide. What is gay life, normal gay life here in South Florida, in Miami Beach lately? Uh, so Miami Beach is a very welcoming community uh, towards gays and lesbians. We talked about uh, the flourishing of gay bars here uh, in the uh, 1980s, 1990s, and early 2000s. Uh, people are surprised to know that there's very few gay bars in the city today. Uh, that's actually the case nationwide. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one... Let me now, guess, the apps? Correct, that's okay. very good. That's one reason. Yes. And the other Do you have a guess one, for the second reason? Well, the, I, I would say my experience has been that gay people were more homogenized in society. Therefore, we don't need gay places to go because we're welcome everywhere. That's exactly the reason, right? Gustavo. Oh, okay. that, so those are the two main reasons. Uh, and there is actually a more uh, organized gay life today in Broward County uh, oh, around yes. Fort Lauderdale in a small Wilson town Mount called Wilton Manors. Gays are more visible there, probably especially yes. in Wilton Manors, a uh, high percentage of the people who live there uh, are gay. I would say 98%. Uh, yeah, but, uh, as yes. I said, uh, Miami Beach is a very welcoming community. 2009 was uh, 37 years after the first uh, gay parade was held in Miami Beach. It became an officially sanctioned event by the city of Miami Beach. I think Miami Beach is a very welcoming community. As you said, gay people are now well integrated into the city, probably not quite as visible maybe as uh, uh, the 1990s and very early 2000s. Uh, but Miami Beach is a city that flies the gay rainbow flag uh, at City Hall. Uh, and we're standing uh, here, you see the rainbow flags in the background. We're standing in front of uh, the Gay and uh, Lesbian Welcome Center, so that's where tourists could come to get information. Right. Also, the Gay Chamber of Commerce. Uh, any uh, gay-owned business or uh, gay-friendly business can become uh, a member of the Gay Chamber of Commerce. And thank you for watching another episode of Gustavo's Word. I hope that you were able to learn or remember certain facts about the gay history of Miami Beach. And thank you, Mr. Howard Breyer for your uh, great contribution and I cannot wait till I keep doing more videos with you because you're amazing. Well, thank you for inviting me, Gustavo. I enjoyed making the video and I'm looking uh, forward to uh, making more with you. Yes, so thanks uh, again. they're coming. So thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, to like, and also to make your comments, say all you want. And thank you very much. See you in the next video.